Hey guys, welcome back. Another handful of brand new polls have been released over this past day out of the states of Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, South Carolina, Minnesota, and a national poll. Actually, five out of six of these polls coming from YouGov. If you want to take a look at these resources for yourself, I'll have links posted down in the video description. Before jumping into the data, just a quick update on where we're at with the Nevada caucus with 60% of the precincts reporting in. When we get closer to knowing the official results, I'll be updating you guys with the pledge delegate tracker as well as recapping my predictions, seeing where I went right, where I went wrong. So be sure to check out those videos in the future. But we can see on the first alignment, Sanders had a pretty solid lead among the rest of the pack, a little over 19,000 votes, Joe Biden around 10,000, Buttigieg around 9,000. Warren at around 7,500, Klobuchar 5,800, Tom Steyer at 5,100. But what really benefited Sanders is the fact that almost across the board, he was able to get past that 15 percentage point threshold in each of these caucuses, which means his voters could stay with him and then also potentially add on from those voters who were behind candidates that didn't reach viability. So then when we go to the actual final delegate number, which is what's going to be used to determine the pledged delegates that are divvied up among these candidates. We can see a big gain there for Sanders where he gets up to 46%. And then you have Biden at around 19 to 20, Buttigieg around 15, Warren at 10, and Klobuchar around five, Tom Steyer around four. And once we get to 100% of results, if you're a Sanders supporter, you want to see Pete Buttigieg drop below this 15% number. So then you'll likely get a bit more in the way of those pledged delegates, at least on the statewide level. So now moving back over to the polls, I want to start here with these battleground states. So for these Democratic primaries, we had sample sizes in Michigan of 662, Pennsylvania 537, and Wisconsin 428. And across the board, pretty positive news here for Bernie Sanders. He's in first place in each instance. Now, if we go back to 2016, Sanders outperformed quite a bit what the polls were indicating in both Michigan and Wisconsin. And that's probably partly due to the fact that those are open primaries that should benefit him again in 2020. But Pennsylvania is a closed primary. You have to be a registered Democrat to participate. That's likely to be a little bit tougher of a situation. Sanders lost to Clinton in Pennsylvania in 2016. So that could be a bit of a closer race possibly in that state. But just to run through the numbers here in Michigan, you have Sanders there at 25 Nine points back is Biden at 16, Bloomberg as well as Warren each at 13, Buttigieg at 11, Klobuchar at 8. In Pennsylvania, again, Sanders bringing in 25% in first place. Now, Biden, he has ties to the states of Pennsylvania, and then also with that closed primary, really a state that he has to do quite well in. He's pulling in second place here at 20%, Bloomberg at 19, Buttigieg at 12 Warren at nine, Klobuchar at five. And then in Wisconsin is where Sanders has his largest lead, 17 points over the second place options. He has 30, Biden and Bloomberg each at 13, and then Buttigieg and Warren each at 12, Klobuchar at nine. And just one more thing I want to point out here, Klobuchar, she is the Midwestern candidate. She makes sure everyone knows that whenever she can. But then you have these Rust Belt states and Midwestern states like Michigan and Wisconsin, and then a little bit out of the Midwest there, Pennsylvania, but a similar type of demographic, not necessarily translating all that well for her Midwestern status, where she does the worst out of all these candidates at eight, five, and nine percentage points, respectively. Now I want to go down and take a look at the general election matchup numbers. These are states that are likely to play a big role in who goes on to win the Electoral College. And we can see in Michigan, we have Biden defeating Trump by four points. He's ahead by one point in Pennsylvania and up by two in Wisconsin. Buttigieg up by six in Michigan, tied in Pennsylvania, up by two in Wisconsin. Klobuchar up three points in Michigan, tied in Pennsylvania, and up one point in Wisconsin. And again, for Klobuchar, out of all of these hypothetical head-to-head -head matchups, she does the worst cumulatively in these key states. This is really what she pegs her candidacy on, electability, winning where Democrats need to do better in 2020 to get above the electoral college number needed to grab the victory. But again, not necessarily translating here with the numbers, three points ahead in Michigan, tied in Pennsylvania, one point up in Wisconsin. And then Sanders cumulatively doing the best against Trump, where he's up by seven in Michigan, up by two in Pennsylvania, and then also up by two in Wisconsin. And then Warren, she's up by three in Michigan, tied in Pennsylvania, and up by two in Wisconsin. And we can see the sample sizes in a general election a bit higher than just the Democratic primary-specific polls, where you have 1,249 in Michigan, 1,171 in Pennsylvania, and 936 in Wisconsin. Now moving over, 
This is a national poll out of YouGov. In the next two YouGov polls nationally, as well as the South Carolina result, we can compare to the prior numbers. Some interesting shifting around here. So this national YouGov poll, really strong sample size here, 6,498. And Sanders still in first place. But before jumping into the first choice options, I wanted to touch on the percentage of these respondents who are considering voting for these upper tier Democratic hopefuls. Now, we hear this a lot in the mainstream media. Well, Sanders, he has a ceiling that he might have a hard time getting past. Well, when you're talking about a ceiling, essentially what you're saying is the number of voters who would consider voting for you. And actually, Sanders has the highest ceiling in this instance nationally at 48 percent of those Democratic primary voters considering him. That number is 44 percent with Warren. So the two more progressive candidates actually displaying a higher ceiling here than the centrist moderates where you have Biden at 38, Buttigieg at 29, Bloomberg at 27 and Klobuchar at just 22. And then we go down and take a look at the first choice. In contrast to the prior result, Sanders is up four points in first place at 28, Warren up three points to 19, and these YouGov polls have consistently been stronger for Warren than what we generally see from her in the average of the national polls. That continues to be the case here with her at 19, but also possibly getting a decent boost there after the uh, past debate that we just had. Biden losing one point to 17, Bloomberg gains a point up to 13, Buttigieg loses a point to 10, Klobuchar loses two points to five, and then Steyer and Gabbard at two and one percentage point, respectively. And to wrap up this national poll, also wanting to look at the head-to-head -head general election numbers. Biden doing decently well here against Trump. He's up by two points at 47 to 45. Bloomberg actually doing the worst. And with these candidates that are putting themselves in that centrist moderate lane saying, well, I can do the best because I can bring in moderates. I can bring over crossover Republican votes. Not the instance here for Bloomberg, where he does the worst, 42 to 45, losing by three points. Buttigieg tied with Trump at 44 apiece. And then also Klobuchar, kind of a similar situation to Bloomberg, where she's trying to make that crossover Republican appeal, the moderate appeal. Again, losing to Trump here, 44 to 45. And then Sanders does the best in the head-to-head, -head, up by three points, 47 to 44. And then Elizabeth Warren ahead of Trump by one point, 46 to 45. So now just two more state-specific polls to wrap things up. This one coming out of the state of South Carolina in some huge swings in this YouGov South Carolina poll compared to the prior result, which came out back in mid-November. To start off with the candidates that are getting the most consideration among the voters, you have Biden at 51, Sanders at 44, Steyer at 41, Warren at 31, Buttigieg at 25, Klobuchar at 15, Gabbard at 4. And then the first choice here, in that prior poll, which came out in November, Biden was at 45%. So he loses 17 points down to 28. And now very competitive there at the top with Bernie Sanders, who picks up eight points. He was at 15. Now he's up to 23. So just think about that. In mid-November, Biden had a 30 percentage point lead over Sanders in South Carolina. That has now shrunk down to just a five-point lead. It's crazy how much things can change just as you start working your way through primary season and actually get some of these results that can change the minds of a lot of voters. And then we see Tom Steyer. He also doing pretty well for himself. He picks up 16 points from the prior result, now at 18%. Warren loses five points, down to 12. Buttigieg picks up two points to 10. And Klobuchar picks up three points to 4%. And then the last poll is out of the state of Minnesota. This one is posted in the Star Tribune newspaper, but unfortunately you need a subscription to get the exact data from this article. So since I can't view it there, I'm going to go over to 538 and just look at their numbers that they posted here from this uh, particular result, which comes from Mason Dixon Polling and Research Inc., a sample size of 500. And the senator from Minnesota, Klobuchar, is able to lead the pack at 29 percent. Sanders, he did very well in Minnesota in 2016. It was a caucus back then. He really crushed Clinton in that caucus situation. It's switching over to a primary this time around, so you'd expect it a bit more competitive at the top. Sanders at 23 percent, Warren at 11, Biden at just 8, and Bloomberg and Buttigieg at just 3 percentage points. And what I think we're seeing here is that more centrist moderate vote is coalescing behind Klobuchar, which is making things a little bit tougher on Biden, Bloomberg, and Buttigieg in this instance. So those are the six polls that I wanted to run through in today's video. And again, if you want to check them out for yourself, I'll have links posted down in the video description. And hopefully we get something in the way of final results coming out of the Nevada caucus coming up. So I can recap those making the official results videos, going over updating the pledge delegate tracker and seeing where my predictions went right and where I went wrong. Hopefully I'll see you guys back here for those future videos.